you please stand and welcome the Dr. Clarice Fluitt. Dr. Clarice, Dr. Clarice, Dr. Clarice. Okay, thank God. Um, if you will understand that God saves the best for last in a very real way, um, that my request was to be the last speaker of the day be, because I basically have a reputation as a closer. And that uh, I don't miss deals, praise God. We, we are in this. Most of you are aware that I've been doing this for about 53 years, been all over the world, seen all kinds of things, and that my heart's desire has been to be the pen of a ready writer, to, Lord God, lead God. Let me be attentive to your ear. Let me know what season that you're in, what's going on. And I was, of course, Nancy and I are dear friends. We talk a lot, and she was telling me about her conference and, I've had a, a lot of opportunities as far as health is concerned, not doing a lot of traveling at all. And she was telling me about our conference, and we just began to talk about, I, I would just love to, I love to be here because I love you, and I love her, and I love Jesus. So that's a triple rated chord. <laughs> and the, um, the, the, the situation, she said, well, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be 3 o'clock and everybody's going to be gone. I said, no, no, the finishers will be there. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 um, the, those wonderful people that got thrilled, filled, and chilled are going home. <laughs> and they will be back for more. Uh, my desire is before we are concluded tonight that you will be deputized as full-fledged official exorcist in the body of Christ because when I'm telling you that that's not, a, that's not a little thing that I'm saying. I'm not just speaking evangelistically. I'm telling you that God wants to do something with awakening a group of people to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Not to be able to make things as complicated. We have to move fast. There is a new brand of believer that's coming in and they do not have the traditions of yesterday. They've been bound by drugs, alcohol, wrong relationships. The church has been basically impotent. You've had a few thrill me, chill me, feel me moments, but the reality is we have not had a culture change. The culture has turned into the things that the enemy wants. First of all, you have to understand you're in an evil, wicked world. Okay, don't you? Why did bad things happen? Well, are you kidding me? Let's go back and get a little bit of understanding. Satan is evil. That's why he got kicked out of heaven. Yeah. Amen. Let's just make it real easy. So we've got a lot of churches that have changed their mind about relationships. You know, perversity seems to be, yeah, thank you. Good. Uh, perversity needs to be understood that perversity is perversity. I don't care what kind of name you put or initial you put on it. The word of God says no. And there, it's like, you say, well, I, I like to eat candy. And the doctor says, well, you have diabetes. You eat it, you die. You know, it's just that, that way that we're people making choices. And if you know what the Lord has said, he's, he's not come to give you an option. He's come to give you a plan. And that why we don't want boundaries, don't tell me what to do. This is my life. It's my body. And they said, there's no real hell. If it's a real loving God, he would never send us to all of this reason. Reason is nothing but doubt in disguise. Yeah. Doubt is the spirit of the Antichrist. Yeah. Antichrist is not against Christ. It's not a, a beast with horns on it. Antichrist is against the anointing. The devil says anything except the anointing because the anointing does not break the curse of the law. The, the anointing destroys destroys and we have to become destroyers in the kingdom of God against <laughs> I'm talking fast because our dear friends are leaving and they've got to catch a plane and that we know that the cross pollination is going on in the spirit and we have several uh, individuals I, I got the cross pollination from them today and then I'm going to cross-pollinate what God's given me onto them so we're not going to, nobody's going to miss a stinking thing. And so you have to be able to choose to agree with God. Just choose to agree. I'm expecting and requiring and requesting and doing everything I know to say, take notes. I'm going to go fast. I'm not going to keep you forever. 
but I expect you to learn because what I'm going to be telling you, I can tell you 95% of you never heard it before. So I wish I had the liberty of doing, you know, five weeks, but because we're at war. There's a great war in the heavenlies, all wrong against all right, and God's people perish for a lack of knowledge, and that's called ignorance. And ignorant is not stupid. Ignorant is uninformed and inexperienced. And the things of God do come, become yours and mine by the reason of use. There are things that I did when I first got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've written a book and said, for God's sake, don't do that. You know, there, I was sincere. I was just sincerely wrong. I remember that this big, heavy-set woman was there, and it was just a prayer meeting, and, and the leader said, let's lift Mary to the Lord. I thought, man, it's going to take all of us. And it's going <laughs> that my, my concept, you know, because I had not learned the language yet, and I went over and I'm grabbing on her arm because I thought we just going to pick her up, you know. Let's lift her to the Lord. And we'd sing these songs, I am climbing Jacob's ladder. And, <laughs> and, and that the ladder rain was falling. And uh, we, I thought it was L-A-D-D-E-R. So if there, had been a, if there had been a premium on ignorance, I would have had many trophies by this time in life. Ignorance is not stupid. It's uninformed in experience. And so we can go fast or we can go slow. But Chicago is on God's heart. So the Lord spoke to me and he said, this is, this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to go to Chicago. And I said, and do what? And he says, turn on the lights. And I said, what does that mean? He said, when you come into a room where it's all dark, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about Chicago. I'm talking about the ruling principalities and powers and the spiritual wickedness in high places. This is who we have to address tonight. You and I are going to stand instead of Christ in the full armor of God, knowing that you are invincible, knowing that you are a winner, that you are not bound by anything that has to do with familiar spirits of the past or bloodline curses and nobody knows the troubles I see and I can't pay my bills. Shut up. You continue to talk like that, you're going to continue to be immature. It didn't say impure. As long as I'm need-oriented, man-centered, and entertainment-based, I'm really, it's all about me. But God needs men and women standing in the stead of Christ, talking like Jesus, walking like Jesus, acting like Jesus, and terrifying hell, because hell is a defeated foe. Isn't that right, Larry? It's right. What I told told him today he'd been fighting cancer, and I said, well, the big C is Christ. It's not cancer. You're healed. Walk in it. You just, don't you love that? Praise God. I need a little water, babe. And um, thank you. It's my daughter, Juliana. <laughs> so what we're going to do is that we're going to invite Duncan, to just come up here for a moment. And those in the back that were over the sound system and did not get the opportunity to get the cross-pollination of what was going on, he cannot leave without imparting it to the whosoever actually want to say, I wish I'd been there, but I was just busy working, and woe is me. Nobody knows the troubles I see. Everybody gets something except me. I just work all the time. Shut up. You know, the, these are things. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of words that becomes voice activated. And every time you say something, poor, pitiful me, there's a demon that says, the sons of God say they're sick. The sons of God say they're going down. The sons of God say this. And they go back, and you know, they have all power because they're the redeemed of the Lord, and they're the ambassadors to, uh, to the earth. They are to bring redemption to the earth and they're all messed up and they said that so they said it we've got the power to make it happen every time you say something bad about yourself so every time you say something bad about your children every time you say something bad about biden i'm telling you it's not the thing that god wants us to do he wants you to speak life in every situation learn how to talk right you know you see all this talk about the pronouns <laughs> listen you better learn to talk bible you better learn how to say, agree with God. If you want the benefit, here's the procedure. Can you say amen? amen. You know, so rather than, than finding out all, all things are wrong, but we have two, four, six. Six is an incredible number. It's the number of man. But when we put the man of God with it, that makes seven. 
and that is a number that speaks to us of maturity and perfection, and we're adding, or say, okay, now, you guys, make up your mind. If you want to be prayed for on the count of three, get yourself up here. The rest of you, sit down. God hates a double-minded person. <laughs> no, no, not all of you that have already been, sit down, you double-dippers. <laughs> Learn to hold on to what you got. Amen. Act like you're married to Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is it. This is it. All right, Duncan. Sick them. <laughs> I've got to learn how to do that. Yeah. There just, it's easy. Just. All right. Come on over here. Step forward. All right. All right. Okay, nobody else can come up now. Gates closed. Abba. Abba. Oh. Build them up, Daddy. Whoa. Abba. Fire on them, Holy Spirit. Abba. Pew. 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 All right. Oh. Fire on them, all three of them. Shaka Abba. Abba. Whoa. And they might be the youngest, but they're going to be the most anointed. Ah! <laughs> Dr. Clarice, where are you? Oh, there she is. Thank you. God bless you. Safe travel. Give them a clap offering. Amen. Uh, you know, you guys, let me tell you something that I have learned that might be beneficial to you is that we invite the Holy Spirit. You know, if you, go, you say, I, oh, I invite you, Holy Spirit, uh, teach me. In the morning when you get up, invite him. He's such a gentleman. And then you begin to praise him. And I have found the louder you praise him. See, I was praising God and I was saying, Oh, and the Lord says, You know, there's a scripture where this prophet, God says, Hey, you think these dead, dry bones can live again? Y'all familiar with that? And the prophet was young and he said, Oh, Lord, you know everything and I'm just a kid. I don't know anything. And so, as soon as you say, I don't know anything, you qualify. Because it means you're ready to be taught. It's the people that know everything that mess up. And so he says, I don't know. And God says, well, look, you speak and I'll breathe. Breath, ruah, spirit is very important. And you and I, when we pray, there's a river of life that is inside. Just what the scripture says. You know, every river has a mouth. And you need to open your mouth wide, and God says, I'll fill it. And that there's a difference between a little stream and a, a, a little lake and a roaring ocean. And you can have whatever you choose when you choose to open your mouth and begin to say, Lord God, not... And all of a sudden, you know, I'm tall, I'm bad. I'm telling you what, I'm the worst nightmare you've had. And you pray, everything that's touching my finances, I now use my situation as a point of contact to pray for the nations of the earth. You release the antidote to the Antichrist. But if you go around, you think hell's scared? Go and change the world. Change the world. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. When you sing, you have a gift that is with you. I hear rap. And don't be nervous about it. I studied opera for 16 years and woke up one morning saying, and the spirit of the Lord is loud and clear and out of me. He will appear. You got to understand in the depths of your soul. He took my brass and he gave me his gold. And I'm 83. So get on over there. Yeah, so it's, uh, 
When you are given something, activate, ratify, yeah. prophesy, act like you got it. Yeah. And just say, well, we'll see. We'll see. You, you, you just lost it. You know, doubt in, in coming here had so many opportunities to say, George went to the hospital. I went to the hospital. And then 10,000 other things were going on. And I said, I thought you told me you wanted to go. And he said, I did. I said, well, why is all hell boiling off over here? He said, did you not say that you were going to take on the spiritual wickedness in Chicago? Have you woken up? He says, put your full armor on, and if suffering bothers you, don't go there. <laughs> Come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Now, you, you guys have got this. You know what to do. Pray loud. Let rivers come out of your mouth, you know, just, and, and then prophesy. And everything that you're going through, everything that you're going through, use it as a word of knowledge to pray for nations. You got that? Don't waste your sorrow. God bless you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. If you will extend your hand toward me, and release the anointing of God that you have in your life on me for the next hour, because you're not going to need it, but I will. Gracious God and Father, I thank you that the steps of the righteous are preordained, that, Lord, before I ever knew my mother's womb, you put me in this room, that time and space have to get out of our face because there's a great war in the heavenlies. All wrong against all right, and we are progressing. Every step is incredible or it was prophesied by Ezekiel in verse 28, chapter 16. If you're taking notes, write that down. You need to learn that. You can say, where did she say that was? By the multitude of thy merchandises, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. God is talking to Satan. He's talking to Lucifer, the most beautiful, most perfect creation, creation he ever made. I didn't make that up. That's what the Bible says. He was perfect in all of his way. That perfection it means mature. He understood all things. How did this happen? How did this happen that a great war in the heavenlies took place? Everything. Lucifer said, I'll be as the most high God. I'm going to replace you. How did he lose? It, you know, you think, well, once saved, always saved. Well, the devil was once saved, but I can tell you right now he's not. By the multitude of thy merchandise, you have filled the midst of yourself with violence. You have sinned. That means you missed the mark. Therefore, I, the Lord God, will cast thee as profane, evil, wicked, defiled, out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub. What is he talking about, O covering cherub? It is understood by many theologians that Lucifer was a, the personification of music, sound, and light, and that he had the power that whenever he would lift up his pipes and the music that came out of him caused all of creation to worship. And the reality is God says, what you bow before you become like. When God told the, uh, the Israelites, he says, come and worship me. Come out of Egypt. Come out of darkness. And what you bow before you will become. So if you bow before fear or dread or doubt, that's what you're becoming. That's what you're feeding to. That's what the scripture teaches. And God is saying, hey, this is what you did. He says, I'm going to destroy the old covering cherub, gifted, talented, beautiful one, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. Your ability to use knowledge skillfully has become poison. Your ability, you don't have it anymore. Every thought that you have is filled with wickedness. And he says, I'm going to cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee, that thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries. And you have to understand that the sanctuaries of Satan, the dwelling places of Satan, was within the redeemed because he was the one that was going to teach them how to worship. You've got to understand that Satan came. He says, I want your house. I want you to be the one that's going to worship me. You understand what, what I'm talking about here? Now, if you get through before I do, you can go home, okay? Because I want you to 
hear what I'm saying. I know you've had a grueling time, and God planned it that way. He planned it that way because this is information that you've got to want to know. You say, how did this work? He says, thou hast defiled thy sanctuary because of the multitude of thy iniquities, sin, and by the iniquity of thy traffic. And what is he saying? How did you do it? Through trade, to peddle merchandise stuff. Anyway, I need this, I need this. It's never-ending want thing. I want, I want, I want, I want it for me. I want it for them. God says, I want you to have beautiful, lovely things. That's not it. But when that becomes so important, what kind of car I've got, what kind of phone I'm doing, and what blah, 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 blah. If there's anything in your life you couldn't give away tonight, I would worry about it. I'd worry about it. And I, I take inventory quite often. And I'll say, ask me. And I have just found the more I give away, the more he lays on me. And you're going to find that to be true. The more he's going to bless you with his presence, his wonderful thing. He says, because of your peddling, because of your merchandise. Remember the first thing that Jesus did is cleanse the temple. And he sits down and he makes a whip. He wasn't sweet about it. It was the love of God that was going in there. And he kicked over tables and everything and said, you made my father's house a den of iniquity. And he says, buying and selling. He says, my house, my father's house, that's you and me, is called a house of prayer. Prayer is conversation with God on a term and in a language that he speaks. And the word of God that he speaks is not, my name is Nita. I need a, I need a, I need a, I need a thrill me, chill me, feel me. That there has to be a time that, that our children grow up and they have conversation with you that's not feed me, clothe me, shelter me. It's not about need. You just say, what's on the family plan? What are we doing to build the kingdom of God? That's what Jesus is interested in. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, it's the way I'm sending you. Same anointing. So no, it can't be the same anointing. Well, read on. This is what the word of God says. I will bring thee to ashes before the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. So all this stuff that's going on, you say, oh, my God, I'm going to have third world war, going to have this, going to have that. Sure, you're going to have it. If you read the Bible, you know it's going to go on. You know things are going to happen here. It can't stay the same. It's, we are filled with iniquity. But the good news is the wicked are becoming more wicked. And the righteous are becoming more righteous. And old ladies are becoming exorcists. I'm going to take that water again. Okay. I don't have a holder here, or I'll just leave it. It'd be out of your holder here, please. Are you learning anything? Yeah. You feel the passion in my heart to be able to talk to you because I'm going to round you up. Then we're going to address spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, when you learn about the, excuse me, when you learn about the ranks of the adversary's army, this is what it says in Ephesians 6, 12. And Ephesians 6.12 needs to be a memory verse. You need to have this down and to understand it. It says, you're wrestling not. When you wrestle, every muscle in your body is used. Did you know that? It's a real, it's, a, it's an incredible, I mean, everything is going on at one time. When everything was going on at one time, and I thought, Lord, did I, did I not hear you? And doubt came in. You cannot mess around with doubt. I'm telling you, a double-minded person becomes unstable in everything. Should I go? Should I stay? Should I do this? Should I do that? Maybe I just thought I heard. Maybe this, maybe that. Let me tell you something. Anytime you can side on the side of faith, move in that direction. That makes sense? Okay. I, I, my daughter was coming with me, and I called her, and I said, you know, my, my doctor called me. He said, do not get on a plane. It's stupid for you to do that. And I said, how long we've been friends? He said, about 30 years. I said, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> That's the spirit I want to impart to you. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Amen. That you, you just have to come to the place where you're violent. You're violent because it's not about you. I was doing a meeting with a man named Sid Roth, and I was talking to him about spiritual warfare. And he said, Clarence, aren't you afraid that that? devil or come back and come against you? I said, he would if he knew where I was. But my life's hidden in Christ. I'm, a, I'm okay. As long as I get my mouth right, you know. And the only time I've got to, when I take my helmet off and look around and say, y'all see me, then they're they going to know who's talking. You, it's 
you got to learn how to talk. Talk, walk, go together. So in Ephesians 12, it says, he says here, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. That's one. Against powers. We're getting higher. Against the rulers of the darkness. That's three. And against spiritual wickedness in high places. Chicago has many spiritually wicked, filthy, strong, killing, maiming demon forces coming into the sanctuaries, coming into the churches, coming in, not just to the bars and the, no, no, they want, they want you. They want your sanctuary. That's where the Lord says, you have defiled my sanctuaries, my dwelling places. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. Behold, pay attention. The house of God is with the redeemed. So consequently, what we put in, what, we, what comes out, all of this is very significant and very important. You're not ordinary. You were ordinary. You were lost and bound for hell, but you got born again and you became a living creation. And the Holy Ghost came upon you and both he that sanctifies, which is God, and that he is, is sanctified, they become one. And a third of you moves into sinless perfection. And then your soul, your intellect, reason, and emotion comes under the teaching word of God. And you quit listening to all the crazy stuff that you're listening to and watching all the crazy television and quit having your mind constantly changed into worldly things and thinking a little of this isn't bad. No, I'm telling you, it's not bad. It'll make you weak. It'll make you weak. You need to be praying. You need to be studying. Listen, if it's 1.30 this morning, I woke up and I said, Julie, are you awake? She said, yes, ma'am. I said, you know, the Bible says, and at 4 o'clock, and we're going, blah, 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 blah. And she says, you're not going to be able to walk in the morning because, because you have spent all your energy preaching to me. <laughs> I said, just want to be sure we're on the same. And she said, Mama, when you planted it, you planted it deep. Because when all hell came against her life, as we were struggling to have a place to take care of young girls bound by drugs, alcohol, and wrong relationships, through our church and church school. And Julie was my prayer partner. She was about 12, 13 years old. And they called and said, can Julie come over? And uh, they were doing some project at the house. And I believe everybody's good. That was then. My warfare is different now. I'm very suspicious of everything. You know, just because it looks like, walks like, talks like, thinks like, I'm going to look at it and find out what it is. So she went and she came home and the next day she came in, she's crying. And she said, Mom, I said, what, honey? And she said, I went to the girls' home and they showed me how to smoke a marijuana cigarette. Don't you tell me that's not a, a gateway drug. It tied her up for 23 years. And we would go through incredible thinking she was dead, you know, just everything that you had believed for, everything that you knew that God was doing in her life was gone. But see, this is the deal. I had to go through the suffering. She had to go through building her own testimony. And sometimes testimony is testing and moaning. Sometimes you've got to go through the dark night to get on the other side of the soul because we have found out, beloved, a man or a woman that has a testimony. Not God's going to do something someday. I prayed, the family prayed, and every time I would hear from her, it would be like, I don't even know who this person is. Those of you that have had drug people in your life, mom, dads, uncles, aunts, it's, it's all out there. And it would be like I was talking to a dead man. And I said to her one day, I said, you know, Julie, the love of God is on you and your, your call to do marvelous things. And she said, Mom, I'm never coming home. 
And she said, if you knew what I'd done, you'd never think that. And I said, no, honey, if you ever knew what God had done, you wouldn't be talking the way you're talking. Go do what you have to do. Go do what you have to do. See, see if you can sin as much as you can, then sin some more. Because I'm going to tell you, all my children are disciples taught of the Lord, and great is their peace and undisturbed composure. Let me tell you that. Love is not agreeing with people because you don't want to offend anybody. You got to understand love has two, two or three edges to it. And we just, we went through it over and over. And of course it ended up, she's going to tell you a little bit about this, but the deal is 30 years ago when she was just a kid, I'm a pastor. You know, the scripture says, if you can't run your own household, how you run the household of God. And uh, I stood before the congregation. I kept them apprised. You know, where Julie is? What's Julie going on? I said, you know, she's called to preach. You know, she's going to turn the world around. You know, she's not ordinary. And they'd say, oh, we know that's a mama's prayer. Let me tell you something. You've got to understand it. It's not just a mama's prayer. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. If I'm just making it up as I go, but I read it in the word. Great peace have those who love thy law and nothing by any means can offend them. I refuse to be offended by the things I heard she was doing. I said, that's your evil, wicked twin. That's not you. <laughs> you. You've got to understand, and the love of God has to go get people, and they can't do it if it's just religion. Religion will never do anything for you. Amen. But the love of God will compel the lost to come home. And we have people right now, they're so far away from any background or understanding, and we think we have to explain it all to them, but it can be imparted. It's just, it can be imparted, and God will put a hunger in them and let them go around and develop some thinking. It says, this is what the scripture says. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But what I tell you, principalities, say that with me, principalities, powers, powers. the rulers of the darkness of this world, world. and spiritual spiritual wickedness that dwell in high places. That's the second heaven. They're strong. They're mighty. They're mean. And they know their time's running out. Because the church is going to quit being mamby-pamby. You know, I've been hurt. I've been wounded. The preacher didn't speak to me today. You got, you've got all kinds of things. Nancy told me to move when I'd just gotten there. I'm not going back. Well, Shonda, you know, we're moving on. Chicago's moving on, and you're not being known as the number one crime capital in the United States of America. Do you want that reputation? Only you, only the redeemed are going to be able to do something about it. So when we get down to the point that we are going to administrate the estate of God with the revelation of a finished work standing in the stead of Christ, and do we have on the full armor, say with me, I have the helmet of salvation. salvation. I'm a born-again, spirit-filled, tongue-talking believer. I have the breastplate of righteousness. I have received... The robes of righteousness righteousness. from Jesus Christ. Christ. When God looks at me, he filters me through the blood of the Lamb of God. He only sees Jesus. I was a sinner. Now I'm a saint. You say, you have to die to be a saint. We did. You reckon the old man dead, not sick. When something is dead, beloved, let's bury it. Quit talking about, I've been hurt, I've been wounded, my mama did this, my daddy did that. Don't you realize that's nothing but demon fodder? That's all it is. Get it up. One life per person. Get on with it. Champions live differently than ordinary people. Anybody can find fault. Did you know it takes a fault line right before a volcano erupts? You just want to get these family feuds going. He said, she said, they said this. Why don't you cover that with the blood of Jesus? 
Why don't you forgive the daughter that got pregnant? Why don't you forgive the son that stole? Why don't you forgive all these other people? You say, and just put up with it? No, begin to release the antidote to the Antichrist by saying it may take you 20 years. Because every time somebody asks me, what do you hear from poor little Julie? I said that she rules the world. And they said, you know, we heard this happen and we heard that happen. I said, why do you gossip? What does the word of God say? Now, God was teaching me because there were times I wanted to say, God, if you treat your friends like this, you're not going to have many. <laughs> I said, when does it stop hurting? Are you hearing me? When does it stop hurting? When is it over? When does 15, 16, 20 years, and it's just one little thing right here. There were, you know, there's always multitudes of things going on because your faith is great. If you have peanut faith, you're not going to be tested. You'll get a hangnail. You'll be confused about where you go on vacation. But if you're a son of God, you're going to understand what suffering is about because you are being conformed into the image of the dear son of God through the fellowship of the suffering. You understand that? <laughs> Nobody likes it when I teach them suffering. But everybody's suffering. It's like, don't talk about being fat. <laughs> I am. Um, You gotta love me. <laughs> and that you're gonna say, she went home and left us here and told us we were Jesus. Told us that we're supposed to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and that we are supposed to preach. And where am I supposed to go to get it? You got a computer, every one of you got a telephone. I reach 20 million people today on the telephone. He said, well, that doesn't count. What are you doing? What are you doing? God is filling the earth with, with his voice, and the diversity is so wonderful. Instead of thinking, oh, well, we're not all saying the same thing. We all walk alike, talk alike, think alike, dress alike, and somebody comes in that's different than us. You know, if we all live in a, in a community where everybody's crippled and blind and somebody shows up that's not crippled or blind, we want to beat them up and throw them out because they're so different from us. And say, wait a minute. Let, let's learn about the. How did you get? Weren't you crippled? Yeah, I wasn't. I met Jesus. He, somebody prayed for me, and my leg grew back, and my eyes came back. And he said, "Oh, well, we that's not. We don't believe in healing. <laughs> well, stay sick. You know, just let's find somebody that will agree with God. Can you say Amen to that? <laughs> so that's loving somebody. Is you're not going to beg somebody to." Oh, I just want to know the Lord. I just want to know the Lord. Well, he, he's not going to give you an option. He's going to give you a plan. And this is the plan. He, he said, the only thing you have to do to walk in miracles, the only thing, believe in the one who sent me. They said, well, Jesus, we want to do the works. We want to heal the sick and raise the dead. We want to do those things. And he said, well, I'll tell you what you do then. He just believe in me. Believe in me. And every time... I would say, oh, Lord God, please touch this. Please touch that. And he says, if you say that one more time, I'm not going to show up. What did I say? You said, please. And he said, every time you say please to me, you're saying, I don't believe you did it. He says, quit trying to get into a room you're already in. You say, well, I'm not healed yet. My body's still this. He said, it's never going to be. You must create with the fruit of your lips by calling the things that are not to become the things that are. Does that make sense? Yeah. I didn't write that. <laughs> Everything that I'm sharing with you, it's become a way of life for me that you think, oh, Jesus, what's going on here? The scripture says in Revelation 20 and verse 2, and an angel from heaven laid hold upon that old dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, many names, one devil, many demons, 
and bound him for a thousand years and cast him to the bottomless pit, shut him up and set a seal on him that he should not be able to deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he'd be loose for a little season. You say, whoa, wait a minute. I thought, what are you talking about? It's the millennial reign for a thousand years where you are going to be governors and kings and princes and you are going to be seated in heavenly places administering the estate of God with the revelation of a finished work that there will be no death, there will be no sickness, there will be no demonic activity, all de demons and devils and all strongholds, all that's gone and we are one yippee ki -yay bunch for a thousand years. This is the mystery of iniquity. He said, I'm going to turn the devil loose for a season. And there will be people who will go with him. It happened in heaven. It will happen on earth. And then eternity will begin. So if you think the end of the world is coming tomorrow, you're wrong. You've got a thousand years to be able to plan to stay here. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Praise God. So, but, you know. The earth can be destroyed by fire. All kinds of stuff can happen between now and then. You know, that looks like that. But don't be filled with death, doom, and destruction. There is no death with God. Because he says, once you put on that full armor, that helmet of salvation, which means you are protecting the mind of Christ. And that's very, very important to do this. And then he says, you have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, there's no self-hate, low self-esteem, unworthiness, frustration, nobody loves me. All that mess that you want to sing about, you know, somebody pray for me, somebody help me, somebody, get over it. Just, just right now when you go home tonight, say, I'm through with that. I'm a champion. Good gracious, when you look at me, you've just seen Jesus. Here he comes in a form you're not familiar with. Praise God. The diversity of God. You think, never heard anybody talk like that. This is not religion. This is the reality of relationship. I'm telling the truth back there. You know I'm telling the truth, huh? Now he's amen to me all the time. But um, then you have your loins girt. Your loins, the reproductive parts of your body. They're protected by the word, the power, and the love of God that you don't produce things that are wicked and weak. You don't produce lies and schemes. You're honorable. You're a person of character that it's just an amazing thing because your loins are girt with truth. And what is truth? Truth is the word of God. But there is a difference between truth and facts. You know, my fact checker will say, well, that's the way it is. And the Lord says, wait a minute, you need to check that with the word of God. Because a lot of stuff that you're listening to nowadays, they'll slip little words in, in the teaching. You think, wait, no, there was just a little piece of glass on that stake, just a little bit. Just enough to kill your digestive system. Mess up your, your reproductive parts that you begin to reproduce. Jesus said, the devil came. We couldn't find any dirt in me. So I, he couldn't grow anything. Did you know when the Bible says, you are created, you are made, behold, you are an earthen vessel. That's dirt. And he says, the reason you are made out of dirt is so no flesh is going to glory. That the things we do will be so obviously God, no flesh, good glory in it. You know, how do you do that? Well, it's not me. I've just turned the vessel over, the sanctuary over to God. And then the glory of God is the manifestation. We say, what is glory? Glory is the manifestation, the demonstration of the Lord, the love, the word, and the power in your countenance, conduct, and conversation. I said that fast. Who can say it back to me? Come on, let me hear that. <laughs> you, you did it. It, it. Countenance, conduct, and conversation. Say that with me. Countenance, conduct, and conversation. The definition of glory is that the countenance of God look like you're up to something. Hi there. And I don't, I don't want to hear you tired. I don't want to hear you sick. I don't want to hear you down, oppressed, suppressed, repressed, depressed, or possessed. I want to hear you saying, thanks be to God, all things are going well. Glory to God. Because I'm going to get what I put out. I may not get it in 15 minutes. But how I wait will determine how long I wait. So after I called Julie and said, I'm undetermined. She said, I've never known you to be undetermined. I said, well, this is... We're going after something big and bad, and I don't want to drag a lot of people into it that aren't ready for it. 
And she says, well, call me. And I asked my husband. He said, are you kidding me? You're going to come to me and ask me if you're supposed to do this? And he said, the things I've watched you do in the past 63 years, you think I'm going to tell you that God didn't tell you to do something? You're not going to get me going to hell. I mean, it's, it's, you know, he says, I'll write a letter that says I excuse you from anything <laughs> like that. He said. But it was so funny uh, like that. And he says, I've never known you to doubt. I said, well, what is this little foul thing? And then when you want to do this, side on the way of peace. If you're making notes, side on the way of peace. I called the president of my board and said to him, this is what's going on. And he just laughed. He said, see you in Chicago. <laughs> and then I called Julie and I said, this is what the Lord says. A double-minded person is unstable in everything. And since I'm not crazy, be ready to go at 10 in the morning. There are things, that, some battles that we're going to have to fight, but you're going to have to side on the righteous side. And you find out if you strip fear down, Scripture says God has not given the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. What you fear, you become. That's what the Scripture says. And so if you fear, what you fear will come upon you. If you fear death, if you fear being abandoned, if you fear being broke, if you fear, if you fear, the bottom end of that, the power of all sin is in the Levitical law. The law is perfect, but it cannot produce perfection. You understand what I'm saying? So you are grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. And you get right in the middle of grace and jump over into the law, then you're going to become double minded and you won't be able to make a decision. A decision is never a conversion. We think, oh, we had 500 decisions for Christ. Yippee ki yay, that don't mean jack. <sighs> Salvation, healed, delivered, and prosperous, is process where the Holy Spirit is renewing your mind in your soul, teaching you to agree with the spirit man so that two-thirds of you can speak to the carl man that is always interested in facts. The carl man is always at enmity with God. When your flesh says, this is what we're going to do, blah, 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 and you have not saw God, he's going to find a way to get an excuse not to do what God wants you to do. Side on the side of God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. All right. So now that I have my helmet of salvation, I have my breastplate of righteousness, I have my loins girt, my reproductive part, and I've got some shoes. These are the shoes. The gospel is good news. So my shoes, I'm, I'm, I'm clad glad. I preach glad, not mad. I might shout at you every now and then, but I'm not talking about you. I'm mad at the devil. And that has deceived people and caused them to have so, so much grief and sorrow and say, here, let's go major on the minors instead of majoring on heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and preach good news. Let's don't make this hard. You know, God's going to have the fivefold ministry. He's going to have the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, those that labor in the word. Then I have the sword of the spirit. Ah. I have the shield of faith. I find so many Christians are fighting with their faith rather than their sword. The shield of faith is to protect you from the fiery darts of the enemy that's trying to make you doubt, trying to make you not read the word, trying to say, just watch one more TV show or come see with the news. You need to be informed. Why? The word of God has the power to convert. And what we're looking for is conversion, not decision. So I can say, I'm going to clean my room up and I've decided, but I can promise you it will not get it clean. What's going to happen is I have to activate. I have to activate my commitments or it means nothing.
Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. So God's looking for, for that. And then when you find out that the sword of the Spirit is this. That's what we're going to use tonight. You're going to see, I've got this full armor on. I walk like, talk like, think like, act like Jesus. The devil doesn't know who's coming against him. Here comes Jesus from everywhere. Here comes Jesus in a form we're not familiar with. All of a sudden, Chicago's got a trembling sport, force of power that's coming against spiritual wickedness in the second heaven. And they're coming down. They say, I'm going to cut your head off tonight. You understand that? We might have to deal with the little guys that are down beneath. But right now, we're going to go for the source. And we're going to speak to those things that have to do with addiction, all kinds of addiction. We're going to speak to those things that have to do with alcohol. We're going to speak to those things that have to do with perverted relationships. We're going to say, down in the name of Jesus. You're going to take your sword. And we're going to all be like David, not just running after Goliath, but all four of his other brothers. While you're on the kill, while you're standing in the stead of Christ, while you're rejoicing in, for this purpose came I into the world. Who am I? Who am I? I am a child of the Most High God. Where am I going? Well, I'm going back to God. How are you going to get there? I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead me, guide me, and inspire me. I'm not going to get caught up in some little tributary over here, some new age conversation, some great revelation that somebody had. You know, you, you've got a lot of smart people. I had a plumbing situation in my house. I am not a plumber. But the, the situation had caused the commodes to back up, which is a very limiting comfort. <coughs> and so I called a plumber. Did you know plumbers are expensive? <laughs> and of course, you always have these troubles on the weekend. <laughs> and they're twice as expensive then. And he came in and he's looking around. The problem is right here. I see it. I know this is the problem. But I'm not a plumber. And he said, well, this is the way it is. He says, I'm going to have to get a snake. <laughs> and we're going to go up on the roof. <laughs> Limited knowledge will cause you to make really bad decisions. And I said, and for you to take a snake up on my roof to clean my commode out, I don't quite understand your purpose. He said, you're not a plumber. He said, do you want us to clean it out or not? And I said, well, what kind of snake? <laughs> and about that time, George came out and I said, this man wants to take a snake and go on the roof. <laughs> and he wants to charge me $125 an hour to do it. And he says, well, it'll probably take a snake. What theology are you under at this, you know, at this point? But see, I was not informed. I was ignorant of plumbing. We come in, we talk about spiritual wickedness, and we begin to find out, do you, if you have a toothache, do you want to go to a carpenter or do you want to go to a dentist? If you have a legal problem, do you want to go to a plumber or do you want to go to somebody that knows about the legal? We have got to understand God puts teachers in the body and that we're all to learn, but we are not all teachers. Everybody is not called to know everything, but everybody that is born again is called to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. I mean, you don't have to be a road scholar to get a hold of this. Praise God. And it's for whosoever would call upon the name of the Lord. This is very important. And then you begin to make friends of people that understand if you want to say, well, actually, how long was Moses' beard? If that's important to you. <laughs> there are people that spend a lot of time, you know, uh, I call them wannabe Jews. <laughs> and they're really interested in sidetracking, you know, and they want to talk about things. And 
what God is saying, hey, let me tell you what I want you to do. Every day, I want you to bring at least two people to a saving knowledge of Jesus. Every day of your life, every day of your life, and you begin to set yourself a goal, and you begin to say, invite the Holy Spirit, learn to get up an hour earlier and pray. Take notes and ask the Lord, what do you want me to do today? You say, well, I do that. Well, get up two hours early. Increase. Increase. Listen. Change your mind. You say, well, I know, all, know about all that. I've been doing this for so-and-so and such-and-such. And such. Listen, you're going to get left behind. <laughs> we live in an age now where five-year-olds can operate a phone better than me. <laughs> like that. And they look at a magazine going, what is that? You know, <laughs> punching the pictures. It's a different world. You understand? But the thing that doesn't change is the infallible and errant altar more to God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. This is very, very important. Are you learning anything? Yes. Okay. Have, have we come down to the place where we learn about the ranks? You've got, you've got your, your spiritual, your... When the enemy comes in, then like a flood, the Lord will lift up the standard. The standard is the word of God. But he can't lift it up if you hadn't put it in. You understand? If you want the benefit of being able to, when you get caught in circumstances and situations, say, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. He's going to put you in circumstances that you don't know how to do. And that's where you grow. And you begin to find there are people you can go to and say, I need some help here. If you're sincere about it. And then you begin to invest in yourself. You come to conferences like this. And then you buy the material. You read the books. And you don't just make mental ascents. Say, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You understand that those circumstances in your life where you're so sad and so mad, the Lord says, you need to preach glad. Look at that situation and change it. And I've seen in my lifetime, my. God, things that were so black, things that were so gruesome, things that were so bad, and you just had to say, thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph. Early last year, we were just celebrating Christmas, and everybody, one big happy family, everything's good, just mark that off as a great day, and the phone rang, and my son said, Mom, Johnny called him. He came home and found Becky, our second born. She's dead. And long story short, that uh, she was working at uh, a home, restoring the lives of broken people. And she took what she thought was a Xanax that was laced with 50 times the amount of fentanyl that needed to be in there, and she died. What happened to all my children are disciples taught of the Lord with great peace and undisturbed. What about my boast in the goodness of God? That, that my baby's dead. And I went before the Lord. And this is what he said. Clarice, you don't even believe in dead. Find another adjective. He says, she's with me. And he says, she's got a lot better stuff going on than you do. <laughs> he said, I don't want you to cry like a helpless, hopeless person. He says, I have nations, watch what you do. I have angels, watch what you do. Don't you ever make me look bad. I never came to give you an option. I just came to give you a plan. And you have the power to impart that to other people that are saying, if that old lady can do it, I can do it too. Now, Julie was working in California in this big, posh, wonderful market. And she was, had, I mean, my God, how her life turned around. She's doing great. She's married. She's got kids. She's got all this stuff going on. And I said, Becky died with fentanyl poison. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. And he said, Clarice. Rejoice. He says, because I'm going to use you to help find an answer 
to fentanyl poison. I said, I don't know anything. I'm a church lady. Why in the world? You know, why don't you call somebody that knows something? He says, he says, I took 23 years to teach Julie about it. Call her and tell her to come home. And y'all are going to open a, a sanctuary. It's not going to be religious. But we're going to find hurting people. And we're going to turn it around. And uh, that's what we've done. That's what we're doing. And I'm telling you, you have to stay. Every day, you have to stay in the power of the person in the presence of God. You can't moan and groan. You can't say, my husband did this, my son did this. My Forget it. Jesus said, I've paid it all. I've paid it all. And he says, I'm bringing to perfection everything that concerns you. Everything that concerns you. I've shown you just some of the things that the Lord is saying. Is he saying you couldn't even cry at your daughter's wedding? I mean, if you, wedding, maybe it was a wedding. Um, the, I, I said it had to be tears of joy because I don't believe in death. I believe we're eternal beings, and I believe I'll surely see her again. And so consequently, we are here on planet Earth, and the purpose of you being on planet Earth is not to get a swimming pool or a Cadillac. or uh, th 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 that's, not, that's not what your vision is. Your vision is, I'm going to heal the sick. I'm going to raise the dead. I'm going to cast out devils. I'm going to preach the word of God. And that I am, I am more than a conqueror. Now, I w Julie's about to come up here, but before she comes up, I want you to hear the words to this song. There is a generation of young people that can't stand parents. Scripture said they'd be like that. And all the scriptures talking about what's going on, and it's going on. We see what's happening with the school and all. But rather than talking about what's happening in the kingdom of darkness, can we just begin to talk about what's going on in the kingdom of God, that God is bringing people out of dark bondage, and they are coming out strong and mighty and said, I've seen what the devil's got, and he can't have any more. And so in the midst of this, Julie was, she said, Mom, you need to listen to this song, listen to the words. And she said, every time I hear it, I think about you, the imprint that you've made into my spirit man. And I listened to it, and I thought, I am so religious. If this is what the nations are listening to, and I don't even know what it is to criticize it, what, what are they singing about? Because I... A lot of people that are singing in the church are singing about things that passed. And there's nothing sadder than faded glory. We need a fresh vision. 